that they serve and our Jewish community. Thank you. My name is Katie Stone. I am a small business owner. I am a mother. I am an advocate for children. And I am pro-choice. Unapologetically pro-choice. First of all, I want to ask everyone today, I, I see we have a very friendly crowd, but in case anything escalates in any way, I beseech you all to just not be reactionary or combative. And because emotions and tensions do run high around this issue, I'm going to ask us all to just take a deep breath, breathing in the commitment to peace under this glorious New Mexico high noon sky. It makes me sad to tell you that a menace has descended upon our city. An out-of-state, out-of-touch, extremist and radical anti-abortion group has its target set upon Albuquerque. Two weeks ago, Operation Rescue's affiliate youth organization, calling itself Survivors of the Abortion Holocaust, invaded our town. Their training... Their training camp was billed to our elected officials as an effort to gather signatures for a ballot initiative which would invite the voters of Albuquerque to restrict a woman's access to abortion. This group dis distributed postcards throughout our city which had the names, photographs, addresses, of doctors and women's health care providers, labeling them as killers. Then, they stormed the New Mexico Holocaust and Intolerance Museum with their absurd and utterly offensive demands that the staff minimize the Holocaust, which killed more than six million of my Jewish relatives. A week ago Saturday, the group protested at a local birthing center, displaying graphically disturbing images and verbally attacking the midwives, doctors, and patients while a woman was in the process of giving birth. Then, as if that's not bad enough, the mob terrorized the private residence of a local family physician, frightening their children who were trapped inside the house. The extremists surrounded that home for hours while chanting hateful slogans through megaphones. You know, its name sounds so innocuous, like they save little baby bunnies. But Operation Rescue is not, a, is not an organization that is innocuous. Operation Rescue has left a bloody trail throughout its history. Eight doctors have been murdered after Operation Rescue conducted incidents just like these, fomenting hatred, inciting violence in all communities around America. Their current national policy director at Operation Rescue named Cheryl Sullinger spent two years in prison for bombing an abortion clinic. She is their current policy director. Operation Rescue is not welcome here. Yeah. 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 we do not accept the use of cruel and terrorizing tactics to advance radical religious and political agendas. Operation Rescue is not welcome in Albuquerque. youth from California and Kansas that were brought by Operation Rescue's network would threaten the very lives of women and girls in New Mexico. These girls and women who are seeking medical help, their lives are in danger with that ballot initiative. But we aren't going to let that happen because we are going to stop this ballot initiative in its tracks. We 
demand that our elected officials commit to protecting the citizens of Albuquerque, especially those who have been targeted by the menace of Operation Rescue and its collaborators. We demand they protect us. Together, we are going to stand strong against hatred, against bullying, and in support of New Mexico women, doctors, nurses, midwives, and our Jewish community. Join with me now. Welcome everyone here today. Commit to standing strong against Operation Rescue. There are so many leaders in the pro-choice movement in New Mexico, and we are absolutely delighted to have our first speaker here today. She was the first woman ever to be elected Lieutenant Governor of the state of New Mexico. She has won numerous awards honoring her many contributions to our community, including the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Community Service Award, the Women Impacting Public Policy in New Mexico Leadership Legislative Award, the Hispanic Women's Council Las Primeras Award, the National Child Health Advocate Award, and she is the winner of the Planned Parenthood Champion of Choice Walk the Talk Award for her consistent dedication to preserving a woman's right to choose. I am humbled and delighted to introduce to you the Honorable Diane Dennish. <laughs> today to show your support for our Albuquerque women. Like some of you in the audience, I'm here today because I remember what it was like before Roe v. Wade. I was a college student at the time, and I remember some very desperate majors, ma measures being put into play for young women in college who were pregnant and did not have access to safe and legal abortion. No I am here today because out-of-state interests, who I believe are out-of-state with Albuquerqueans and New Mexico, have come to New Mexico to try to impose their beliefs on New Mexicans. And what are those beliefs? New Mexicans for years have had respect for each other's diverse beliefs. And New Mexicans believe, like people across this country, whatever their view is about uh, their own personal decisions to have an abortion, they cannot and should not make those decisions for other women. I am here today because I am a mother of two daughters and a grandmother of two granddaughters. And I want them to have the same safe legal abortion that has been safe and legal for the past 40 years. Those days that we celebrated when people spoke up and said this is something, this is about women's health. It's about a woman's right to privacy. It is about a woman's right to make her own reproductive decisions with her family, her loved ones, her doctor, her faith. This is a battle that we must win. And we should say to those, to those people who are here to impose their beliefs on us from Texas and California and across the country, Please go home. Thank you. Champion of Women's Rights. She is a public servant 
who has prioritized safety issues, including domestic violence prevention. We are delighted to welcome the chair of the Bernalillo County Commission, representing District 3, the Honorable Maggie Hart Stebbins. Isn't she great? Where would we be without people like Katie Stone? Thank you so much for organizing this. So welcome. You know, it's hard to follow an act like Diane Dennis. She's so eloquent. She's so wonderful. But I want to repeat that message about tolerance. You know, the women who are joining us today are all, we're all proud New Mexicans. We value and we respect the diversity of our state, our local community and respect for the various religions, cultures, and traditions that we have here. New Mexico has a long history of that. And respect for others is a hallmark of what makes us New Mexicans. And I'm going to talk about a different kind of respect. Respect for the health care providers and for the sanctity of the, of the doctor-patient relationship. The Hippocratic Oath is one of the oldest promises in our culture. Written more than 2,000 years ago, its principles are held sacred by the health care providers we have today. Treat the sick to the best of one's ability, preserve patient privacy, and put the patient first. Here in Albuquerque, this very personal, private relationship between a health care provider and his or her patient is under fire from an organization out of California, challenged by people from outside New Mexico, who have the arrogance to say that they know what is best for a patient and her family. And one of the most disturbing aspects of this out-of-state campaign is the harassment and the threats directed at our health care providers. Yeah. These out-of-state groups they are targeting, targeting the doctors, the nurses, the midwives, and other health professionals who have chosen to honor their commitment to their patients. These out-of-state groups have harassed and threatened the educated and compassionate individuals who serve our community every day, day in, day out, taking care of women and their families, helping them to make the right choice for their health, for their families, whatever that might be. These out-of-state groups have harassed individuals in private residential neighborhoods, deliberately trying to bully and intimidate the doctors and other health care providers with whom they happen to disagree. And given the history of Operation Rescue and the murders that you heard about earlier, those providers have a reason to fear. Now, the Albuquerque City Council many years ago adopted language that prohibits political protests in many in residential neighborhoods. And on August 22nd, a week from today, Commissioner Debbie O'Malley and I will introduce an ordinance that will extend those protections to all of Bernalillo County. <laughs> and those protections guarantee the right to be with your family in your own home, free from harassment and fear. <laughs> the United States Supreme Court has held that local governments may in protect the rights of citizens to be free of picketing directed at them in their homes. Bernalillo County's ordinance will mirror the language in the city of Albuquerque so that all county residents, including our health care providers and their neighbors, can feel safe in their own homes. So I invite you to join us next Tuesday for the introduction of this ordinance, 30 days later, for final passage, to let everybody in this community know that you support allowing that kind of privacy and that kind of protection for your health care providers. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Lady Hope 7 yeah. Yeah. is a woman who gets things done. Our next speaker today is Democratic State Senator William Bill O'Neill. He represents Albuquerque's North Valley in our state legislature. Senator O'Neill has been at the forefront of protecting a woman's right to choose in the halls of the legislature since first being elected in 2008. 
and he is an active participant in the Respect Women Albuquerque Coalition fighting this ill-considered city ballot initiative. He is a graduate of Cornell University and Bill is unwavering in his support of a woman's right to choose and he has the votes to prove it. Please join me in welcoming Senator Peronio. Well, thank you, Katie, for that kind introduction, and thanks to everyone for being out here today. You know, last Saturday, 10 days ago, I received a text from a constituent of mine that a certain group of out-of-state religious extremists had surrounded a doctor's house in my district, chanting disturbing accusations for his wife and three children to hear with a megaphone, threats, etc. My constituent who texted me wanted me to know that this was happening in my Senate district. I was in Santa Fe at, a, at the time with a less than functional old Volvo station wagon because my first impulse was to get there as soon as I could with my most menacing male friends that I could round up. If you and me, you take your duty to your constituents seriously, especially if that person happens to be a doctor doing his job. Yeah. 